Hi, so CS here. I thought I would give you a quick update and a few pointers on my rep rep. So, and talk about some things that I did differently from the instructions that I would probably recommend. Um, so, update. It's done. <laughs> so, it took me. Actually, sort of, so you can see it, I guess, while I'm talking. So, uh, it took me about 40, 50 hours to make. Um, I'm perfect. Sorry. I've been drinking beer, and I am a perfectionist and unable to speak. Um, so I'm a perfectionist, and it took me probably a lot longer than the average person. Um, I've never put one of these together before, and I've never put anything on this scale together before. And so it, it took quite a while. Um, turned out fantastic. It was time well worth spent. Um, so... There's the update. So I'm going to give you a couple quick pointers on printing and this machine. And then I'm going to tell you things that happen in the build and things that I would change. So quick, a couple quick pointers. Once you print something out and you want to make it shiny with acetone, apply it with like a brush or... Take my glass off. They're shiny. So apply it with a brush or paper towel or like a little sponge. Do not pour acetone directly on your part. The reason being is because it will find its way in the inside somehow or another, even if it looks perfectly sealed, and it will melt your part from the inside out. Um, lots of fun there, you know, great party trick. Hey, watch my shot glass melt before your eyes. Not great when you've just spent two, three hours printing out a part and, you know, spent God knows how much on plastic. So, apply your acetone with some sort of device. Second thing, um, so I want to talk about the fan. And so there's a little fan back there. Let's see if you can see it. Not really, but it's back there. And it turns on, obviously, and it cools down the part. So, I... Uh, you hear about people, you know, saying, oh, it improves your build quality all the time, and you just turn it on, and it works. That's yes and no. That's that's true and not true. Um, when you're working on a very large, flat part, uh, that's that's when you're going to get a lot of warping, and that's the reason you have the heated bed, is that is it keeps everything at you know, relatively constant temperature. It keeps it somewhat soft and keeps things from warping. If you turn the fan on, it's going to cause things to cool and can cause things to pull up off of your tape. Um, even if it's adhered perfectly, it'll even start to pull up the tape sometimes. So, use your fan for a couple different things. So, if you have something that has ungodly amounts of detail, you want to turn it on. Um, if you have something that has very tall, thin structures. So let's say I wanted to make a pencil sticking straight up like this because I'm crazy. I would want to turn on the fan because otherwise things will melt and wobble. And instead of being, you know, the trick that you did when you were six, it's going to be a real life wobbly looking pencil. Um, so turn on the fan only after a few base steps. So get, you know, a 30, 30 levels high before you turn it on, on on large pieces just kind of as a general rule um, that's what works best for me you may change it you may find it works uh, differently for you so that's how it works for me um, oh so another big tip let your bed cool down all the way before you take your part off um, the reason for this is because once you stick your little putty knife, spatula, prior upper thingy. Uh, under a still hot part, well that still hot part is still part soft, meaning that you're going to bend it and make it look nasty and you're not going to be very happy with yourself because you just destroyed something that's taken you two or three hours to make. So let it cool all the way down beforehand. Um, if you're like me, and you're impatient, you can go get one of those air blaster cans and flip it upside down. You're doing it this you're doing this at your own risk because this can result in frostbite. But you're gonna take it and you're going to just spritz your part with it. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get this cryogenic fluid that if you sprayed it on anything containing water would freeze, like 
go spray your mother's flowers, you watch them freeze instantly. Um, probably not going to make your mom too happy. And if you're still living at home, you're going to get kicked out for killing your mother's roses. But, regardless, that's a quick way to do it. Um, I've got glass plate on mine, so I can't do that anymore. It would shatter the glass. Um, but if you don't have glass, if you have, you know, a uh, an aluminum or a copper top or steel top, then uh, you, you can do that without any issues. Um, let's see what other tips and tricks can I think of. Um, don't reverse your extruder motor while it's hot or while your extruder is still hot because you're going to pull molten plastic up into your... Um, your extruding unit, uh, your plastruder, you know, whatever company you're getting it from calls it, and you're going to have to take it apart and get all of that molten, now solidified plastic off of everything so it works again. So if you're changing colors or you're putting in a new strand, you're just going to clip your filament short up here, and you're going to extrude it several steps, and then you're going to put another color wire in there or the new wire, and you're just going to extrude it through until it changes colors or you're sure that you have the new wire going through. So, yeah. Okay, so, with that, now that we're six and a half minutes in, um, I'm going to talk about a couple things that went wrong in the build um, and a couple of things that I, I went away from the instructions um, for good reason. So, uh, the first thing that went wrong is measuring. So, in the instructions, it tells you, you know, this needs to be 29. 5 millimeters, and this needs to be 31.3 centimeters, and this needs to be, you know, whatever those measurements were. The only things that you actually need to measure are the triangle components, which this is wobbly because it's on an uneven surface, and move this down a little bit, and then the distances between here and here on the base. That's the only thing you need to measure. Everything else is going to be kind of pulled out of a hat and done with uh, with a with a plum, which is a string with a weight on the end. So um, that's pretty much how that works. Don't measure anything out because you're going to be redoing it later. Um, now these wires, in the instructions, it recommends to connect them to a terminal block, and then you take a cable from the terminal block down into the electronics. It's fine and dandy. You can do that if you'd like. Um, I chose not to do that. Um, all of the wiring, ugh, all of the wiring on my motors was long enough that I could just run it straight through and down, and without any issues. I even have you see this bunch of wire right here. I even have a lot of extra wire. Um, known as service loops, going to be technical, um, and so everything's directly connected, which is nice because you can't get wires twisted or crossed or um, swapped around. Um, what else did I change? I put plate glass on it, so let me move this up. And yes, I am showing this out of my bedroom because it's also my workspace. By plate glass, this is a 20, cent 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter piece of glass. Or sorry, by 8 inch piece of glass. It's not a cube, it's a plate. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take this plate and you're going to set it right on top of your... Um, I'm changing accents here. Um, you're going to set it right on top of your PCB, and which is what's heating everything um, for the layman. And that's because your PCB is not perfectly flat. It is a little bit warped, or at least mine is, and it makes for a bad printing surface because then you either can only print in the middle or you can only print on the edges um, or some variation of that, and it's just a pain in the butt. So... Glass is pretty hard, and it doesn't bend very easily. It does bend, by the way. It does bend. Um, if you ever get bored, let's see if I can actually show you. Not really well. So if you ever get bored, take a piece of glass and shine a reflection on it, and take a pencil and set it underneath and push down on the sides. You'll notice your reflection distorts. That's because glass actually bends. It doesn't bend very much, but it bends. Regardless, it doesn't bend enough, which means that you get a nice flat surface to print on. So put a piece of glass on there. Um, belt tensioners. Put belt tensioners on your belts. They're going to stretch out, 
as you use them. This is coming from years of CNC experience. Put on belt tensioners because accessing the points where you need to tension things, the exception of this part right here. So this part right here you can tension pretty easily. You can unscrew things and pull things taut and rescrew them. But the ones down here, they're not easy to get to. Make yourself some belt tensioners. There's a million different variations on Thingiverse. Download one, print it out. They all work. They all tension. Um, let's see what else. Oh, so funny little thing that happened is I have a jack screw. Now, actually, I actually have two jack screws, and they both came with kit. And I also have two threaded rods that are the exact same length. Now, every picture that I can find of the Maker Gear Prussia has standard threaded rods. They don't have the jack screws. And a jack screw is like a threaded rod with much coarser, um, much, much, port, much coarser thread, higher, higher, um, st or higher steep thread, I guess, so to speak. Um, but regardless, uh, they're included with the kits. And all the pictures always reference normal threaded rods. So I use the normal threaded rods. They work perfectly. Um, I don't have any issues. Every All of the uh, dimensions and whatnot line up perfectly. Um, so right now, that's what's working for me. Uh, now, the normal threaded rods are made out of just steel, just plain steel. The reason I know it's steel is because it rusts. Um, while picking this up by uh, by the steel, which this is wrapped steel, but the unwrapped steel, um, picking it up by that, I noticed that where I picked it up, it started to rust. So it is steel, and it's going to wear. It's going to rust. So this jack screw is stainless steel, and it's not going to rust. And it will wear very slightly, but not as much. So if I start getting wear issues or rust issues on the jack screws, then I'll swap or on the threaded rods, I'll swap them out to the normal jack screw. Um, but for right now, it's working. Buy this. So, there's recommendations for PTFE, you know, lube pen things from Super Lube, and you know, they look really pretty. And if any of you ever played with yo yo's as a kid, it's the exact same lube that you use on yo yo's. Um, but, you know, it's recommended that you put a little bit of that on the rods and you know, smooth the rods so everything slides real nice. And that's great. Except for two things. One, it's oily. And so dust and particles and little bits of smoke, this gives off little, little bits of smoke, but it's enough that you're going to gum up your rods if you use something oily. Stuff is going to stick to them, you're going to have to clean them, and it's going to be a pain in your butt. So, you buy this. This dries, hence the dry lube has the exact same main lubricating ingredient as those fancy pens and costs the same amount for, you know, a hundred times as much. You only have to use a little bit of that a little bit of that at a time. Um, so it's gonna last you for as long as you have the machine. Um, let's see what else. I actually made a list because this is like the fourth or fifth um, take. Let's see, so I talked about that, talked about that, talked about that. Yes. So the only thing, the only things that I forgot about are um, now my my threaded rods were a little bit too short. I was missing about three quarters of an inch, which isn't an issue. Um, but there uh, there's a little platform that the electronics mount to, and uh, as a result, that little platform didn't fit nice and neat. Um, it doesn't matter what different combinations of uh, uh, thread configurations and nut configurations that I did on this upper top to make it work. It just, it wouldn't fit, um, which is not the end of the world. So I had to take a hacksaw and, and modify that platform a little bit, but uh, it takes two seconds and you can buy a little hand. Do I have one around? No, I don't. Do I? I thought I did. But anyways, there's little hacksaws. They cost like three bucks, two, three bucks at Walmart. So, I mean, they're not the big and big long industrial ones are like this long, but they work, work well for that. Um, another thing is the ramps documentation sucks. Uh, now mine was put together um, for the most part without any issues. 
Um, like, like, you, like I bought it put together. Um, now, the only things that were problematic were finding what voltages you're, just, you're supposed to supply it with. So I was given an ATX power supply, which supplies 12 volts, negative 12 volts, 5 volts, and a mace. Some of them give like 3.3 volts, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm probably wrong about the 3.3, but I know it gives 5 and 12. But anyways, while it marks how much amperage is supposed to go into these different ports, it doesn't tell you what voltage they're supposed to be running at. Um, which, for those of you who have taken any sort of electronics, anything, whether you're self-taught or are an electrical engineer like myself, you know that your amperage is directly linked to your voltage, so your amperage marks mean about this much. So regardless, it runs on 12 volts. Your entire ramp should run on 12 volts. Uh, 12 volts. <laughs> really, that's all that comes down to is 12 volts. Um, and make sure that you have the correct... Uh, you have the correct wires going to the correct side so you can get the correct amperages going through and you don't fry your power supply. Um, Let's see. Oh, so one more quick thing. This is the last thing I swear. Is on the kit, you're provided with, you know, your standard USB extension cord slash just cord. I don't know how much extending it is. It's nine feet. Regardless, if you're printing from a laptop, this is going to be your worst nightmare because if you unplug your machine, you're screwed. The current software that's out, uh, as I'm talking about this, doesn't allow you to go back a couple steps. So you can't pause it and then go back to the couple steps that you missed while you're fumbling to try to get the cord back in there. So if you can, either make sure your laptop is always on the desk. I kept setting mine on my bed, and I would trip over the cord and pull it out. Bad idea. Um, or you can get an extension cord, which this is an extension cord. It actually is meant to make the USB longer. This is 25 feet, so it's harder to trip over. Um, that's one method. And then I bought an SD card um, thing for it. Uh, it just allows you to save your prints on an SD card, and then you don't have you don't have to have any wires except for the power supply connected to it. So, um, wow, 18 minutes. Let's see. That's that's everything I can think of at the moment. Sorry. Um, so yeah, that is my current updates. That's a few uh, tricks and tips that I learned. That is how I put my machine together and how I changed it. And so that's that. Um, I will. I bought a little webcam, and I will be making some time lapse videos as much as those already exist on the internet. You know, they're fun. Um, and I'll be making some and putting them online. So, wait for those. Um, okay, so guess a printed part. It's a cookie cutter of a middle finger flipping somebody off. So, you can give your boss the finger. You can give Santa the finger. If you have helicopter parents or kids that will never leave the house, you can give them the finger with loving, cookie, tasty yumminess. So... <laughs> whether you're a bad parent, hate Santa, or you have bad kids, which I probably said that really badly, and I'm probably going to get some bad emails, but you can give them the finger. So, anyways, um, so I'm CS, and for now, I'm signing off.